So the Flifferbachens just invited themselves over. You have nothing prepared. And it's the middle of summer and you don't feel like making your kitchen a blooming oven. What are you going to do? They're going to sit on the furniture and shit. Oh, God. You have to give them something to eat because they want to enjoy your company. So you have to make something. Let's make some hors d'oeuvres. Hello and welcome once again to Cooking Under the Influence with me, I am Sean, as you probably already know. Tonight we're going to be cooking something fun, we're going to be making hors d'oeuvres. I challenge you to spell it properly. You can also call hors d'oeuvres finger food. No, we're probably we won't making finger food from actual fingers. Though that might be a future episode, you never know. But as all good chefs know, before we start cooking, we need a drink. Particularly if the Flipperbockens are coming over. Pim's Cup. Pim's Cup? What the hell is that? I don't know if they have this where you're from, but here we have Pim's Liquor. And we're going to make a Pim's Cup. We're going to start with a tall glass. Here's one now. Because it gets fucking hot down here in the south. And Pim's Cup is a really nice, refreshing way to beat the heat. For whenever the Flipperbockens come over and you just need something to ease the tension. Pim's Cup is only 25% alcohol by volume. So you can drink it all day long. Top the rest off with ginger ale. Wait for the fizz to unfizz. God, it sure is taking its fucking sweet time. Still no watch. Whenever. My wall folds up. God, they sure don't make them look they used to. Christ. I'm put a squeeze of lemon in there for good measure. Now, a lot of Pim's Cup recipes, they like have all kind of fruit and cherries and grapefruit and cucumbers and stuff. If you want to put all that, fine, no problem. I just wanted to get down to business. Mm. All right, let's get cooking. We're going to do some hors d'oeuvres, and we're going to do them quick. We're going to do a bunch of little simple stuff, real easy to make. Let's start. All right, I'm getting myself a bunch of tomatoes. Tomatoes are great summer veggies. Oh, that's a weird looking tomato. Vagina in there. Ooh. Slice up, you know, bite size. These are Creole tomatoes from my garden. And I have so fucking many. A little bit of kosher salt on top of the tomatoes. Salad dressing. This is specifically Creole tomato dressing. You can use whatever you have in your fridge. Blue cheese, ranch, Thousand Island, French, some sort of vinaigrette. Motherfucker! Goddamn top fell in between in the inaccessible stove area there. Javier! There. Rinse off your top. God only knows what creatures have been inhabiting the space between the counter and the stove. A salad does not have to be a big bowl of lettuce and some other shit. A little bit of tomatoes, salt, dressing, and look, this is something I discovered when I was absolutely an impoverished bachelor. Cocktail onions. Into the tomatoes. Just mix it up. That is a delicious salad, trust me. Fantastic. Nice and cold. And if the Bruni Schweigers or vegetarians or whatever the hell their name is, and they'll be good with this. And if they're not, you can just kick them, kick them the hell out of your house. We're going to keep going with the damn tomato theme. Some mozzarella cheese. Real mozzarella cheese, not the processed crap. Basically, mozzarella is... You've heard of curds and whey? Mozzarella is the curds. This liquid is the whey. Actually, when curds start turning into cheese, the first cheese they turn into is mozzarella. So Little Miss Muffet was actually doing pretty darn good. So I made a few slices of mozzarella. Alright, why does this not want to repack? God, seriously? This is my life. Nothing is ever fucking simple. Some fresh basil out the garden. Delicious stuff. Alright, pull off a few leaves of basil. We get us the mozzarella cheese. 
mozzarella, fresh tomatoes, fresh basil. If you put a little olive oil and a dash of balsamic vinegar on there, you have a caprese salad. There's something new I'm going to do though. I'm going to get a little wad of French bread. Use whatever bread you want, I don't care. Sliced in half. Very exciting. Clove of garlic. Alright, now you see your clove of garlic, your little chunk of French bread. We're going to just rub that garlic so you get all that nice garlic oil on the bread. I'm just going to rub it and squeeze it. You can probably think of something else that you can rub and squeeze and it's wonderful. I'm going to take our caprese salad on the bread and have it fall all over the fucking place. Jesus. Wonderful. See how simple this is? Nothing can go wrong. Drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top of the whole contraption, not too, too much, like I just did. And pop it in the toaster oven. Fuck, it fell off again. All right, so that was a bit of a pain in the ass. And you know what, Pim's cup is not nearly alcoholic enough. Boy, that's something when you start spiking alcoholic drinks with alcohol. All right, Kim's cup and vodka. Let's see what that's like. Ginger ale. Yeah, that was interesting. Hey, hey, here I come. Salad is so good. I would charge eight bucks for it in a restaurant because it is that good. It's called a bruschetta, by the way. Fuck me. When I got a tomato that fell to the bottom and now it's coated with toast crumbs and shit. And it's falling off all over the damn floor. Lovely. Pretty. A little bit of balsamic vinegar. Mmm. Oh. Okay, that's really good. Messy. So when it's time for the Inflenbergs to not be there anymore, how are you going to get rid of them? Well, you can play dead. It's a thought. You can fake a seizure. All right, next thing is going to be fun. Oysters. Bacon. You know it's got to be good if you've already just got oysters and bacon. I mean, oh God. Just slice it right down the middle. Everything's better with bacon. Get us a bacon, dishy, panty, shallow thing here, and we're gonna put it on broil. Yes, pour your oyster juice every fucking where. Nothing's ever simple. We get an oyster. Ah, uh, here's one now. And I can't help it. We're just have to eat it. I got some spinach out of my garden. Fresh spinach leaves. Get a strip of bacon. Get a spinach leaf. An oyster and a toothpick. Why is this not cooperating? Motherfucker! Oh, geez, come on, seriously? All the damn toothpicks. Roll the oyster in the bacon and the spinach leaf. Poke a toothpick. It's been so non cooperative through it. Repeat. Can you not get oysters where you're from? Hang on. That's coming. Oysters wrapped with spinach and bacon on our tray here. Oysters are freaking awesome. By the way, if you're not from Louisiana, please buy Louisiana oysters. They are excellent. Uh, oysters, I don't do oysters. I'm just steak and potatoes. All right, if you're one of those meat types, I'm not into the damn oysters. Chicken livers. There we go. That sounds gross. Oh, you haven't had it. And if you have had chicken livers, you know how good they are. We're going to do the same thing with the chicken livers. Wrap the chicken liver up in the bacon and spinach. Now, if you're poor, this is another great way to impress people. We've got a pint of chicken livers. is like a dollar. And this isn't hard. We're just wrapping this shit up. It takes like 10 seconds per thing. And liver, gross as it sounds, it looks, it's actually one of the healthiest meats you can eat. 
There are very few problems in the world that enough bacon can't solve. Chicken livers and bacon with spinach and oysters and bacon with spinach. So everything's good with garlic. Put that in your oven at the top of the oven. Right under the broiler. And don't forget your in the leftovers, you can fry those chicken livers up, make some more toothpicky stuff. All right, you know, I cook a whole lot on here, but I really don't eat a whole lot of what I cook. I eat a lot, just don't eat a lot of what I cook. When I do eat, I prefer this kind of stuff, appetizers and hors d'oeuvres, cheese on a cracker, you know, tuna salad and a thing of crackers. I'm all about that. If you can go on a cracker, I am on top of it. This stuff is totally my cup of tea, right here. Mmm. Alright, it's been a few minutes, let's flip this shit over. It smells so good. Right, since you're broiling, the nice thing is you don't have your oven on long. <clears throat> so here in the middle of summer, you're not going to sweat your ass off, you know, before the insulin birds come over and you have to entertain them. How are you going to get rid of them? You could just say, hey, get the fuck out. You say, you know, hey, we're going to bed. You know, would you care to join us? Depending on the proclivities of the Inflenbergs, they may not, you may not want to do that because then they might just use your imagination. Time for a refill. Ooh. Hey, on a serious note, all right, I never want to make this show to be like a vehicle for advertising. Well, sure I do. I mean, if somebody wants to pay me, what the hell? But, here's a way you can help somebody, not me, but somebody that could really use it. If you enjoy these videos, there's a way you can help. And if you want to contribute, the money doesn't go to me. It's for my brother-in-law, Brian Hogan Jr. He lives in Ireland. Two years ago, he was terribly injured in an unprovoked attack. Got a brain injury. He's 34 years old, he's blind, he's in a wheelchair. His only hope is stem cell therapy. So here's the website where you can go and donate if you can. If you can't donate, just spread the word, share the website. Anything is appreciated. So here you go. So if you like cooking under the influence, that's one thing that you can do to really help somebody in, that could really use it. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Put it on a plate. Now we got our chicken livers wrapped in bacon over here. Got our oysters wrapped in bacon over here. And even if you don't like chicken livers, even if you don't like oysters, wrap it in bacon, you'll freaking love it. But now we've had... Our chicken livers, our oysters, both wrapped in bacon. We've had our caprese bruschetta. And we had, well, we had our tomato, creole tomato and onion salad, which I ate during the whole course of this thing, so it's not there anymore. Good luck getting the influin birds, or jabberwockies, out of your house. Enjoy your hors d'oeuvres. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next episode, which will be... I might do an MRE episode. Hmm.